come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> hey, thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast. <laughs> hey. 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 <laughs> hey, you. Hey, guys. Hey. Welcome aboard. <laughs> Uh, this is a movie review podcast. Is it a review show? Well, we talk about movies, that's for damn sure. We watch a movie, then we sit around and talk about it for your enjoyment and listening pleasure. These are the internet radio superstars. Sean. Holly. Michaela. And I'm Colin. And tonight, the movie was chosen by Michaela. Michaela, what did we watch tonight? We watched George Romero's 1988 Monkey Shines. Monkey Shines. I'm shocked that this is the first George Romero movie we've done in 200-odd really? episodes really? of the show. The Isn't first? It? What else did we do? <sighs> I don't we know. Done any uh, go through his movies. whole filmography. Go. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, there's uh, The Crazies, I think, is an earlier one. Didn't if we're watch skipping that one. Season of the Witch and uh, uh, watch that one. Uh, Night of the Living Dead. Didn't watch that one. Uh, Dawn of the Dead. None of the Deads we've watched. Uh, day have you done of the any dead. Of, the do- of the deads? No. Really? Which one do you no. pick? Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Not to be confrontational yeah. with you right after that, but yeah. <laughs> I'd pick, well, Dawn of the Dead is one of my favorites. How many so dead Dawn. movies are there directed by George Romero? Six. Are there six? There's six. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I'm That's starting to question Sean's right answer. Right Boom! Close this <laughs> without going over wins. Yeah. <laughs> There's night. Dawn, a night, dawn, day, land, survive, diary, and survive. That was a videotape of the dead. Is one of them something in there? Uh, That's diary. <laughs> yeah, okay. yeah. We got kind of video diary. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but he also did a bunch of movies that uh, no one ever seems to really talk about. I mean, aside from like Creep Show, Creep Show is held sure. in pretty mm-hmm. high regard. Um, I didn't know this was George Romero. I've heard of Monkey Shines for years. I'm, yeah, I, I mean, never that, realized this was George yeah, Romero. Yeah, the cover is like, it's sort of like uh, minorly iconic. Like, I always remember this cover. But I never knew it was George Romero. Yeah, that's the little mechanical monkey on the cover. Symbol. Yeah. 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 He's yeah. Got a fucking I think he figures blade. into the trailer, if I remember correctly. Yeah. There's a, you know, mm-hmm. what do they call those symbol monkeys? The, oh, the no, corpse no. grinder? Yeah. Corpse grinder? Yeah. <laughs> or, organ grinder. Organ, organ grinder. Organ corpse grinder. grinder. No, that's wow. something different. These are just the, yeah, a little, I don't know, whatever. Little, um, yeah, the little wind up. Simple monkey. Mm-hmm. You know what we're talking yeah. about. Yeah. You know. You've been there. It's organ grinder. Yeah. No, but he also did, uh, I mean, Martin is a really uh, fine vampire movie that I think it was ahead of its time, which I was going to pick at some point in May still. Um mm. And then, uh, yeah, after Creep Show and the Dead movies, um, the Dark Half, the adaptation of the Stephen King novel, uh, and Bruiser, the guy Bruiser. wakes up and has no face. That one didn't get really. Why doesn't he have a face, anymore. Colin? Uh, he's full of rage or something. He wakes <laughs> up, he's a blank oh. face. Then he kills people. His- oh, he's a blank face. Yeah, he has a, literally a blank face. So he's a no face. Yeah, that's not uh, that movie with Clive Owen, is it? No, it's not Clive okay. Owen. It's oh, I know what you're There's talking about. There was a Clive Owen movie where he didn't have a yeah, face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> really? Yeah. Uh-huh. Well, I can't remember if this was a mask. He had like a white mask or something like glued to his. He wakes okay. up one day and he's got it on his. It's got like two little pinprick eyes and. I think like, I think I found my next subcategory of movies I'm bringing to the freak show. No face movies. Like, <laughs> like Dick Tracy style. Like no face from Dick Tracy. Yeah, the guy has. Or he's, from Critters. He's he got no face. All right. <laughs> it's just uh, no face. Yeah. I just remember the two little holes in the mask and Dick Tracy. Uh, well, George Romero is like a, a titan, a titan in uh, not only horror cinema, but I mean, just like cinema at large, I think, right? For, you know, inventing the zombie movie. Yes. Mm-hmm. Or, I don't know, is that true? Yeah. Well, yeah. as we know them today. As we right. know them, yeah. The flesh-eating mm-hmm. ghoul that rises from the dead, hungering for yeah. human flesh. That's George Romero. Yes. Shoot it in the head and you kill it. Yeah. <laughs> or, what is it to shoot in the head? Oh, removing the right. Uh, fuck, I forgot what the thing is. <laughs> <laughs> removing, by, remo- whoa, by removing the, the head or destroying, destroying the, the brain. brain. That's it. That's it. <laughs> That's the line I was going for. Yeah. Thank you. You got there. That was totally worth the wait. <laughs> oh, I forgot his Dario Argento collaboration, uh, Two Evil Eyes. Mm. They each did a Edgar they Allan Poe story. So it's two short films, like two hour long oh, gotcha. movies. Mm. Yeah. So somewhere in, uh, so this would be after, so Day of the Dead was 1985. So 1988, Mm -hmm. this would have been the movie that he did to follow that. Yep. 
And at this point, um, Orion Pictures was like in real huge financial trouble. So they <laughs> that's why they were like, oh, they're just cash grabbing for a really big name director. So that's why they were like, we'll throw a bunch of money at you if you come make a movie for us because we really need it. Which is weird because they made Bull Durham the same year. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, it, they, I mean... They just had to wait a little longer because same year they had a huge hit. So I feel like Orion was always in financial straits. At some point. It always felt like <laughs> this is our second Orion trouble. movie in a matter of weeks because yeah. you know, the arrival was also an Orion. Yeah, picture. that's mm-hmm. true. So, yeah, because they went uh, belly up. Was I'm gonna try it? I think it was either like the Adams Family. Wait, uh, Silence <laughs> of the Lambs was an Orion movie, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that was 90, and mm-hmm. so it was The Dark Half also an Orion release? I can't remember. Sure. I, I know, might have been. I but I remember it. famously, like, they made The Addams Family and then ran out of money before it was completed and couldn't distribute it and had to sell it to Paramount in order mm-hmm. to save their company, which <laughs> didn't, sucks. you know. Yeah. But yeah. now Orion Pictures is back. Hey! Yeah! yeah. <laughs> so I don't know what they're... to this movie, then? Well, they did uh, The Town That Dreaded Sundown, <laughs> oh, yeah, the, uh, right. oh, yeah. the remake. Uh-huh. That was the first movie to have an Orion Pictures yeah. logo on it in, like, 30 years, and I don't know. I think they have something else. Yeah, there's some one other, other one trailer one. that I saw. I was like, oh, my God, another yeah. Orion Pictures movie. It just makes you feel all warm inside. It does. Mm-hmm. Right. Like yeah. Vestron Pictures. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Bring back Orion and Vestron. Um, well... So, I mean, even at, like, that level, like, uh, financial level, Orion's, like, still kind of an indie company. Because Romero has mm-hmm. been, like, notoriously his entire career anti-studio. Right. Just doesn't want anybody telling him what to do, mm-hmm. apparently. He doesn't like getting notes on, like, you know, how to This do movie it. reinforces that. Like, I think this, <laughs> I, 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 the, as legend goes, that he... He did work with the studio on this one, and then after that, he said, I'm not doing that anymore because he didn't like the experience he had. This movie, originally, the script was 240 pages, and Uh. he said that 40 to 50 percent of the footage he shot is on the cutting room floor. Damn. So if there's something that doesn't add up in this movie, it was there at one point in time. Somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. I always wonder wow. how that happens. You shoot like because he wrote it too. Mm-hmm. Yep. This is based on a book. You mm-hmm. remember who wrote the book? Some don't forgetful have... generic name. There you go. <laughs> and he, uh, so he wrote the movie and then shot it. I always wonder like how that works. Is like how, like much of it, did you not have already in your? You know, I mean, to put yeah. a movie together like way after the fact. And, yeah. You know, right. It's like we shot all this stuff, now we're going to try and salvage some type of movie out of it because it's clearly not working. Or you just find out you don't need a bunch of stuff. Right. Like you can make the connection between two things without uh, superfluous stuff. You're just like, mm-hmm. go from point A to point B without having to stop at C so we can just get rid of it. There is a really great 90 minute version of this movie in there somewhere. You know? <laughs> yeah. Like, it feels like there is. <laughs> yeah. They spent a lot of time near the end roaming around the house searching for a monkey. The beginning. Oh my God, the beginning could have been trimmed down so much. Like, his whole process becoming a quadriplegic was severely drawn out, I thought. <laughs> the, yeah, the whole thing. <laughs> I thought for a second, I thought you were talking about him getting hit by the truck. I'm like, no, no that was glorious. No, that, part, that, was, that was perfect pacing in that yeah. thing, actually. <laughs> Flew into the air. Bricks flying yeah. everywhere. Hey, um, if you're someone who goes jogging with bricks in your backpack, please write and tell us, because I, I have more questions. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah, that's... that's what our, our main character, the first thing we see him do. Get up in the morning. Go to law school. I'm going to go jogging with bricks in my backpack. Yep. You got to work yeah. up that sweat. You need that weight when you're jogging up those hills. Make, well, sure, you, like make a... sure you stretch naked first. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> That'll As help. you all should. Yeah. You got to have the, um, like, what he's, uh, like, he was a like, runner or something yeah. like that? Or like yeah, we a... get the nice shot of all, like, the pictures of him, like, winning races and stuff. Right. So he's, he's got, a like, runner. trophies in right. his attic. So it's more yeah. tragic that his, he lost his, uh, yeah. the ability his coach, to do it. His coach was at his, like, little welcome back get- gathering. Right. right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, like, when he's jogging with the bricks in his backpack, the music could not be any more, like, like, my life is perfect yeah, walking like, on sunshine. It might as well have been yeah. that. Mm-hmm. The birds are chirping. The sun yeah. is out. He's high-fiving Jogging literally everybody bricks. on his way. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Paul. Yeah. Looking good. Yeah. <laughs> Until that Mail shithead man. dog ruins his life. Yeah. Oh, goddamn dog. Still not entirely sure what happened there. The dog comes running out from behind a gate, and somehow he gets hit by a truck. I it took it as scared it scared him, him and he yeah. ran into the street. But yeah. there's a shot missing or something. It was like, did the truck like end up in the guy's driveway? Like, what's happening here? But he yeah, jumped off. Yeah, because yeah. you see the, the street, but that truck was really close to that fucking 
or yeah, yeah. You just see yeah. a close up of the dog, and you see a close up of a headlight, and you hear the accident, and then mm. you see his body like twenty feet fly. in the air, fly, and bricks go everywhere, and the Twirling. bricks Twirling. slam in slow motion onto the concrete and break into you know a thousand pieces, mm-hmm. just like his poor broken body. <laughs> And all exactly. the magic that surgeon Stanley Tucci can muster to put him back together again. The Tucci. It's <laughs> great. And I'm not referring to him oh, any, by anything else besides that. The Tucci. The Tucci. I the love tooch. the Tucci. The Tucci. What'd you say? This is when he still didn't have hair? That's when it was he was disappearing on him. He's, yeah, he was yeah. disappearing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. This is a pretty decent cast for a George Romero. Yeah. Well, I mean, I guess like all of his movies generally... You know, 80s through the 90s had like decent casts, right? I mean, like when I thought oh, I forgot about Night Riders, that's another like a little scene, but you know, it's got Ed Harris in it, who's in Creep Show, so you know, Damn. but I mean, uh, yeah, he usually had pretty good casts, but the earlier ones had like you know, uh, Pittsburgh natives because mm. I think you know, he's famous. I saw aside from uh, like M. Night Shyamalan, right? He's the Pennsylvania. Romero is the. Yeah. The guy who made, you know, I'm going to shoot all my movies in Pittsburgh until he got sick and tired of the United States and moved to Canada. Then he's just like, I'm done. Well, he shot Land of the Dead in Canada, so even though Canada. it's supposedly set in Pittsburgh, like the geography of it with, uh, you know, the two rivers and all that. That's Pittsburgh, but they filmed it in Canada. Cheaper. Cheaper. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, uh, so Jason Beggy. 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 Jason Beggy. Thank Jason you, the YouTube. actor. Who uh, portrays Alan? Alan. 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 <laughs> you, you didn't have it there. You're just like, I remember the monkey, like, but not oh, the main guy. I was going to say Paul. <laughs> Alan, the quad- newly quadriplegic. Yes. Man. Did you catch the symbolism with his last name? His last name is Man. Alan Man? Man. Like man and ape and monkey. Uh, and there's lots of animals are also his undoing because the dog causes him to become a quadriplegic. And- oh my God. I'm done. I'm saying I'm like done. man versus nature is yeah, man. like the theme nature of this movie man, animal. yeah he even kind of basically says it yeah and he's like i'm smarter than you because i'm a human yeah and his last and name is man down. i will destroy you i will rip out your heart with my teeth and show it up <laughs> <sighs> and there are like six monologues like that yeah basically mm-hmm. yeah underscoring the point that's one of those things i suppose <laughs> that you could leave out on the cutting yeah. room floor yeah maybe there's bit. just more statements of that theme uh, in the uh, deleted uh, maybe. footage, it's a little more. Do you think uh, Jason Beggy was like, "This is gonna be my Oscar reel" when he was doing all that stuff? That's right. But then De Niro wins it instead of him. Just <laughs> we, uh, just we think about it. Like, Oscar bait. You movie, play right? a disabled person. That's Oscar bait, I mean, right? That's true. Oh, yeah. you, know? And, you know, animals. Typically, yeah. yeah. It's got to be rough. I mean, we're talking about you know. I mean, well, I thought this kind of of uh, um, when James Caan did Misery. You know, I mean, when mm-hmm. you're stuck in a in a wheelchair, but mm-hmm. in this case, this guy's paralyzed from the neck down. Yeah. yeah. So there's so many times where I was just sitting there, like as an actor, you have to be like naturally wanting to move you yeah. know, in some way. And it's like, no, 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 sorry, Jason, we got to do that again because <laughs> I mean, I don't know if this happened. Guy was probably like on the money every time for all we know. No, I'm sure. But, it uh, yeah, he just loses it towards the end of it. It's like, yeah. Oh, yeah. Damn it. He did a lot of, ah, damn it, monkey. And they're yeah. just like, Jason, we can't do that. <laughs> You're paralyzed everywhere. Except for the face. That's how he knows he's cold. He's yeah. feeling <laughs> chilly. How do you know? My face is cold. No, he doesn't say My nose is cold. <laughs> All right, eyes. so we've been alluding to it for a long time. You figured this out. This movie is about a killer monkey. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So this is part of our ongoing series of podcasts in which <laughs> yes. we are trying to chase, chase, trace the genealogy of some of Hollywood's greatest animal performers. We're doing a shitty job thus far, but mm-hmm. we keep watching animal movies. Yeah. All right, but Michaela is, is working going. on a theory here that the monkey in this movie is somehow related to the monkey in Terror Track, right. this, which we watched a couple episodes ago. Right. Boo, who plays Ella, is um, is actually a male monkey, which I guess they don't use many male monkeys in acting. Um, How I come? don't I, That I don't know, but I do know that um, regardless of gender... Um, the monkeys really actually do form a creepy bond with their handlers, like, much like in this movie. Yeah. Like, that's a real thing with the animal handlers in Hollywood. Male monkeys are more aggressive. That's, they pee a lot. And they, yes. they mark their territory. That's mm-hmm. typically why they're harder to work with. Mm-hmm. 
as happens yeah. in this movie. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Do you think that's why they hired a male monkey? Because they're like, we're going to have this piss scene. We want you <laughs> to be <laughs> aggressive. It's all, all, right. all been leading up to this. <laughs> you can do it, boo. They just reverse engineered around the scene where he pisses on it. Right, they're just like, it's got to happen sometime. Yeah, but there's a lot of a lot of monkey actors in this movie. Like There there are several scenes where we see at least a dozen monkeys. And uh, I, I know for the role of Ella, Boo was the main one, but there were also four other monkeys that were stand-ins or did the other stuff. And I believe one of them was in Terror Tract. Monkeys can only work for certain hours a day. They do actually. They do have a lot of the same legal restrictions as children. Union? See, I'm telling monkey you, this is like this, this, is is monkey right union. Union. this is something right because I'm sure yeah. there is. Boo is probably SAG. <laughs> I'm sure this is a thing. Right. <laughs> Boo probably but, has a SAG card. Oh, wow. No, what are we doing in our lives? I know. And we're assuming that Boo is probably like the descendant of the Raiders of the Lost Ark probably. monkey. No, okay. Yeah, uh, the father thing. to the breakout monkey. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah. yeah. Oh, God, what else? The Outbreak monkey? The Friends monkey. The Friends monkey. Uh, yeah. Yes, Marcel. Yeah. Marcel. Yes. They were, uh, I think that's uh, Cousins right there. There you go. Yeah. So, uh, well, okay, to call it a killer monkey movie isn't entirely Right. Accurate. That, that uh, conjures up images of a monkey running around with a knife stabbing people, <laughs> which does not happen See in this movie. Track. See Terror Tracks. See Terror Tracks. Yeah. No, this is... Uh, so... I mean, I guess we got to talk about some of the characters and how this all shapes up because, I mean, basically you've got the premise alone. Guy is paralyzed and needs some type of assistance. And so you would, you know, somebody says, hey, we're going to try these trained monkeys, which is a thing, apparently. Mm -hmm. Uh, Monkey helpers for, uh, you know, quadriplegics or paraplegics. But that's not enough for this movie. This movie has to go the extra step of also adding in the mad scientist. Mm. Yeah. Which is played by John Pankow, who you may remember from To Live and Die in LA and some other things. Or so, Mad About You. <laughs> yeah. And uh <laughs> yeah. So in classic you all mad shut up scientist like you mode, <laughs> this guy, and I'm not entirely sure of the science in this. It's very sketchy. It's very like horror movie sketchy. Injecting chicken shavings into a monkey's ass. Yeah. Yeah. Well, okay. It's, it's supposed, supposed to be a brain. Yeah. brain. Yeah. So it's definitely chicken, though. Definitely uh, yeah. chicken breast. <laughs> what is Absolutely. he after in his experiment? So he's a friend he's of. Trying Alan, to make monkeys smarter. Yeah. He works at the local college. He's yeah. trying to make monkeys smarter by injecting them with human brain tissue in their ass. Yeah. He puts it in there. We see it several times. <laughs> it's in the butt of the monkey. Yeah. <laughs> Which we figure is that must be where a monkey's brain is because oh. of the gigantic ass on bamboos. Well, that makes sense to me. <laughs> Okay, I don't hear anybody. anybody yeah, that's right. If if no viewer writes in to tell me different, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's true. Come at us. There you go. What's wrong? Bring it on. If you don't, sorry, it's your fault. Yeah, yeah that's some science right there. So yeah, I mean, I've heard you know uh, there have been studies done where cells taken from a person, uh, you know, there was a famous study once where they had like cells in a petri dish or something, and then they sent the person. The owner of the cells, right, like walking down a sketchy part of town, you know, and whenever they would feel nervous, the cells miles away would somehow react. What? Yeah, That's this awesome. was sort of like 2020 or what? something years ago. So there's there was some kind of study being done in that field. Yeah, I know that sounds but kind of, I like this idea. How can you be people of they, how can they be connected if they're not attached and all that kind right. of shit? Somebody's done this idea, right? Like the you get like pieces of somebody else and then you Body start, parts. Isn't that where he gets the hands? Fahey. He's in a car accident, one of the most horrifying car accidents in the movies. And yeah, he ends up with uh, A killer's hands? Is that the killer's hands? Killer arms. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So I remember one where somebody leg. gets ser- some serial killer's hands yeah. or eyes. And I'm pretty sure and both he, movies have been done. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, who gets the serial killer eyes? I don't know. And it keeps that on Isn't that the, the eye? Yeah, but wasn't there like a Jessica Alba movie? Yeah, I think it's yeah, 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 yeah. It was, yeah, 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 yeah. It was yeah. a serial so. killer, was it? It was something. It was haunted eyes or, or ghost something. Eyes. Yeah. yeah, they're just ghost yeah. eyes. Yeah. But yeah, is Jeff Hay the one where he gets the serial killer hands? Yeah, and then his hands are killing people. Yep, I remember that movie. Yeah, that should come. To the but even show. even in the context of this movie, that theory doesn't work because we're told that the brain cheese grated shavings that are injected into the monkey's butt are from a girl that died in a car accident. Right. So, like, someone completely outside the realm of characters that we know. He didn't didn't receive anything donated from her when he was in his accident? 
I don't know. Not that we were told. Not that we were told. That would have been better. That would have connected it. Oh, oh, oh. See, there you go. On the cutting room floor, possibly. Instead of just a psychic link. Yeah. Like a blood blood transfusion or something. Actually, one of the scenes I know is left out, and there's pictures of it I'll have to find. Um, But there was a scene left out where during surgery, um, they were A monkey broke into the room. (laughs) It was just like... That would have been way cooler. Spitting into it. But they actually, um, during surgery for Alan, they also had Boo under, and they took little pieces of each of their brains and switched them. Well, so what? The that was what? cut out of this movie. Uh, yeah. That's what I was I was. So that's how they have the connection. We that's yeah. how they have the telepathic connection. So that's what George Romero that intended. Wait, for what purpose? Because Jonathan Pankow wants to do shit He's like that. Scientist. Yeah. But how, but how do you in... attach someone's brain? To no, it's like he cuts brain? out a little piece but how and just get... like switches them. But how, what is like it? Will, will, it will a brain do that though? Like take another, take its brain <laughs> back and then grow back in? I'm debating the science <laughs> yes. of a monkey movie. I know, but, but that yeah. is well, not That's that it's more plausible. But yeah. I mean, the idea that you know the connection if, makes the connection more makes right. more yeah. sense. Yeah, but there's actually a still too you can see of like. Both their heads opened up next to each other. That was cut from this movie, and it looks really fucking cool. Is the tooch there? Uh, not in the scene that I've see, seen. It's just like a work? close up yeah. of their this heads gonna... in the scene. That like, I've, how would he I've have been, been doing the surgery? Like, Jonathan Panko. See, jo- bu- they so buddied Jonathan up, Panko. I guess. Like, he he puts his have to be crippled friend under and does brain surgery. That's that's bad. Maybe that's this bad was news. all part. See, okay, so here's the <laughs> yeah. whole thing that was cut out of the movie. This yeah. is total speculation, yeah. right? Yeah. But he says, I've been doing this cutting edge te- re- research on these monkeys. And I'm going to, you know, do this thing for you. And so voluntarily, Alan goes in for the procedure and he's like, this is going to be your monkey. And you're right. And then that whole thing's gone out of the movie. Now it doesn't make any goddamn sense whatsoever. Mm, Right. Yeah. Because because Alan keeps saying, like, we're part of each other. We're like, you know, we're linked and all that stuff. But we have no reason to believe that as a viewer because we have no evidence for that. So that kind of puts you on the side of his mom being like, you're fucking crazy and losing Mm -hmm. your goddamn mind. Yeah. Yeah. But if but do you think he said those things in the context of that scene where they switch brain parts exists? Yeah. You know what I mean? I do. Well, then wouldn't the crazy doctor, Jeff, know that, like, couldn't he? he I guess they would have but cut it out. But he's not telling Alan a lot of stuff. Right. I guess they would have cut that out, explaining, like, no, wait, we switched brain pieces. <laughs> Which is an yeah, insane argument to make. I was like, okay, so the, the we do huh. actually see the doctor bringing some piece of brain matter, but it's a fairly large piece, and yes. putting it on ice and then shaving it and making this stew out of it, right? The the serum, of yes. course, is it's called, because it's and a mad scientist. It's thing. always uh, neon green or yep. yellow or bright, that color. <laughs> nice yeah. reanimator green, yeah. yeah. Yep. But we're told... Is it in ADR that we're told that it comes from the brain of a woman who was in a car accident? It's while he's, like, shaving it, he says it. Right, so yeah. we don't see his mouth yeah. moving, so mm-hmm. it could have been <laughs> totally covered there. over yeah. later on. Yeah. And that could have actually been part of Alan's That was a studio brain, note. Brain, but that was a large It's a chunk. large piece yeah, of brain. I suppose, okay, never mind. Yeah. That doesn't check no. out either. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. That was, I to be honest, a part of the movie. I mean, when you once you get into it, you either accept it or you don't. But yeah. the idea mm-hmm. that this guy develops a psychic link with the monkey, you know, it's like, because I get if you're going to go for like the empathic thing, this monkey's been injected with human cells and somehow that makes the monkey more human-ish in right. its right. DNA or whatever. And she's learning basically a jealous right. too. I get the connection later when Jeffrey injects himself with the stuff. Yeah. Really? Because I don't understand that at all. Well, I'm, I, I I would understand it more. The fact Jeffrey's that, the mad scientist. Well, Jeffrey injected himself with the same stuff he injected the monkey with. Yeah, there's at so least... So then I would get a connection happening on. You know what I mean? Because I got the, both the same stuff inside of them. Right. The green fluid he injects yeah. Whereas yeah. Alan doesn't have that at right. all. Right. I would understand the connection there. Not more so, you know, in yeah. a monkey movie where I you guess. have psychic connections yeah. Yeah. in this world. They're at least part of a common, like, control Right, there's a common link of yeah. something in there. Yeah. Whereas he's just having a psychic connection with a monkey. That's yeah. weird. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. hmm. yeah. the first time we establish this psychic connection, I believe, is uh, Alan's asleep and has a dream that he's crawling around. He gets out of, you know, yeah, he's he gets like out of the attic. monkey POV, like, <laughs> yeah. getting out of the house. And then he wakes up like, whoa, I'm having a dream like I'm a monkey. I felt like it was in her body with her strength. Oh, the dialogue like, would have been better with uh, that. 
had a dream it was being a monkey. <laughs> that would have been just better dialogue. Well, there for him is to like deliver. some other kind of weird shit. We were talking in the. You got to go back to our Terror Tract episode, mm-hmm. but the idea that Brian Cranston's character, like in a better version of that, not that it wasn't bad, yeah, uh, right. the you know would would become switch places with the monkey. That actually happens here to a certain extent. He gets teeth. Yeah, he gets the really sharp teeth. Yeah. Yeah, yeah Alan is reverting to his primal nature or something mm-hmm. i mean it's illustrated right. in like okay so i get he's getting some kind of monkey teeth or something and so yeah. when he gets very upset because this is apparently the key feature that he's getting from ella is the base animal anger or whatever right yes. yeah mm-hmm. the uh what does he call instinct mm-hmm. instinct like yeah animal instinct is what he's getting when she's close mm-hmm. that's the connection they share so she makes him angry uh, eventually yes she he shares her anger Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And she loves him. She loves, loves him. him. They had there's like a straight up like romance scene yeah. in this movie between him and the monkey. Like she goes and puts on like the romantic song and the tape yeah. player. Right. And then like, comes oh, up and like me. snuggles up on his neck and yeah. just, like all she starts eyed. turning off the lights and we're like, wait, is she setting the mood <laughs> yeah. right now? <laughs> she puts yes, on music. She is. Yeah. she is. Yeah. Yeah. She comes up, hugs him. Oh, th- at that point in the movie, I was actually thinking like, was the genesis of this like the idea that started it off? Was it like a, somebody wanted to do a reverse King Kong, right? Instead of the love story between the girl and the giant ape, you've got the love story between the giant little man. monkey <laughs> little and monkey. the giant guy. Yeah. That's a great idea. <laughs> right? That's a great genesis for an idea, yeah. <laughs> yes. I was like, how would you do that backwards? Well, you'd have to do it like this. And like, what if he was a paraplegic? I don't know. He right? needed the monkey. He probably, like the idea that they, he probably found out that monkeys help people. And took that idea. Probably. Yeah, 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 I think that's where I that can, I can see. Up. I can see that like mapped out. Like he's reading Newsweek or something and sees an article. He's like, oh, oh, I can write this into a right. book. Like yeah. I can see that. Yes. By the way, I would hug the shit out of that monkey. Oh, oh God, she's yeah. so cute. She could really Adorable. turn on the doe eyes like when right? she needed to. Oh, my to, God. Like, she's so cute. <laughs> yeah, this monkey is like, uh, I mean, as I guess a helper monkey would do, uh, Washing the windows, right. yeah. doing the vacuuming. housework, awesome. vacuuming. Oh my god! See, that's the difference between making a sandwich. Yeah, <laughs> that's the difference between the monkey from Terror Track. Because the monkey from Terror Track, right away, we're like, she's a an asshole. bitch. Yeah, that mm-hmm. monkey is a fucking dick. Mm-hmm. This monkey, we all immediately fell in love with. Oh, we love this monkey. She's great. I like that they didn't make it wear clothes. I was happy about yes. that. Yeah, There's no forced diaper on the monkey. Yeah. That's always a little sad. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just a no, little collar, just a naked monkey, yeah. a little collar. It's fine. Yeah. It's, it's fine. a monkey. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. No frills. Mm-hmm. Except yeah. she's just super smart. No, the frills were saved for the mother. Oh she's God! Frills. Oh my God! Silk and frills and folds uh, and everything she's wearing. My God, well, the mother. The I mother guess character. this leads us to the other characters in the movie. So Alan's life is controlled. To a some- man. I just got that. Yeah. That's his uh, uh, initials. A- a- man. Man. He's a man. That's bravo. Bravo. Oh, bravo. Welcome. Why, why were we deprived of the close up shot of like some of his like medical files that said that? Like a man. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. Man. What? A man. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Damn it. Right. Or, Somebody's looking at his medical yeah. chart as he's doing yeah. surgery. A, a man. man. Mm. <laughs> oh my God. Missed opportunities. <laughs> Uh, it's on the cutting room floor. I was going to say, it's on the cutting room floor. That's where it is. That's George, why you, you think this is a the... bit too much? Ah, all right, cut it out. But that's why you have the Saturday Night Freak Show to give you these moments of brilliance when the right? movie misses them. Because when the movie doesn't think about it, we do. Yeah. Yeah. But his life is controlled by two uh, primarily, well, three women to some extent. I mean, as you have to be, I guess the guy can't do anything for himself. Very true. In a rewrite, mm-hmm. I think two of these women could be made into one oh, character. Oh, for sure. Yes. <clears throat> but the first of which is... Uh, so the nurse. They just Ugh. call her Nurse, nurse Ratchet. Nurse yeah. Ratchet, I mean, yeah. I don't, yeah. Which is nurse. played by uh, George Romero's wife at the time. Really? That was really? his wife? Romero, yeah. Oh, her face fucked Jesus, me. She too. has been in so many of his movies. Um, I mean, she had a large role in Martin and, you know, I mean, like everything I think that he's done since she's in. Yeah. And I think they got divorced familiar. sometime around the time of Land of the Dead. Hmm. Yeah. She was also his assistant on this movie, I noticed at the mm-hmm. end. I'm like, mm-hmm. so you were the actor and the assistant. Nepotism. the director. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There it is. Mm-hmm. But she's like, uh, and this is <clears throat> one of the aspects of George Romero's writing that I've always had an issue with. Uh, like, this character is just like a flat out bitch for yeah. no yeah. really like- rational reason, except like, 
She's just an awful person. Before the monkey's even there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 This is your job. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I can't imagine a world in which someone like that would have that job. Right. Like, that's not a thing. He annoys her by being disabled. Like, the fact that he exists annoys her. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) She's a nurse. Who is this woman? But he's a dick because he can't walk. He can't do anything for himself. I'd be a dick, too. She blames him for the house being messy. Yeah. Like, it's your <laughs> monkey. Yeah. I have to shoulder that burden or whatever of your son, blah, 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 blah. It's like, what the? This is what you're paid to do. And she brings her own parakeet her bird. Oh, into the house. Bird. And he hates, Alan hates birds. I do. Well, I mean, you would, too, <laughs> yeah. if they flew around and tried to bite your like, eyes out. Yeah. And I'm like, how dangerous is this? Right. This bird, like, actually, it's like, all right, now don't open your acting. eyes because he's going to try and kill you. Mm-hmm. That must have been uh, what they told him on set. That poor damn. actor having to film that. Oh, God. Oh, that's having my nightmare. There, you can't move from your neck uh, down and you have uh, a bird just pecking at your goddamn face. Uh, no, no, no. What was the stress no. level like on the set that day? George, this is the last fucking time <laughs> I deal with this right, George, goddamn no bird. Fucking birds. <laughs> I do. I'll give him credit though. The way he reacts, and you can, I guess, attribute it to the story and the monkey making him angry. But the way he reacts to the nurse and uh, and the bird is, it feels like it feels right. He's like, "Do your fucking job. What are you? <laughs> yeah. What, okay. what is your problem?" Mm-hmm. It's understandable. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. We don't like her. Yeah. Well, there's a <laughs> common theme of this, like authority figures in George Romero stuff. Like he writes very broad. Right. I mean, I'd say that this character is written broadly. Uh-huh. Like, there's no uh, humanizing dimension to her. No. Right. She's just like a. She's flat there out for one purpose. Right. Yeah. yeah. To be an antagonist. Yeah. For this first part of the movie. Right. Which is, I guess, to basically make Alan angry, so the monkey will eventually have a target for his, uh, you know, yeah, r- anger or rage. Right. But she doesn't get killed. Spoiler warning: the parakeet. Does not survive the onslaught of Ella. True. Ella's first victim that we know of, anyway. Mm-hmm. Yeah, start small. Yeah. Did you like that she put the dead bird in the slipper? I did I like that. That was a nice touch. I, I didn't really expect that bird to fall out and look so real, though. Yeah, that was, yeah. That was, that that was a was real upsetting. bird. It was a real, yeah. dead, real yeah. dead bird. Yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. Yeah. I didn't like. I didn't like. Sorry, that. birdie. But like the first time I saw this movie, I expected like it to just be dead at the bottom of the cage because we get that great monkey POV shot with definitely fake monkey hands on sticks. Oh, <laughs> well, the monkey the hands are the best. <laughs> great monkey hands. Was there a credit for monkey hands? Uh, who Should have been. Who got to do that? I would have requested the credit. Tom Savini, yeah. who's I would imagine so. On this. Yeah. Yeah. Your challenge on this movie, Tom, is you got to make this monkey seem real. So he's making these little monkey hands on sticks. <laughs> the hands that don't move. So they're always just like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, there was one of them where I wasn't sure if there what if it was a real monkey hand. I can't remember what it was doing, but it was like reaching down maybe to hit the tape deck or something. Oh like yeah, that. I, I think it was, and it was the tape like, deck. Is that a real hand or is that like a gelatinous kind of you know, rubber like, monkey hand where yeah. I hit it in the right place and push? Yeah, I don't know. It's, I mean, some of it you can't tell because it's the monkey acting in this i mean uh, uh, apart from the points where you can tell it's two hands on a stick <laughs> like they get some the monkey to do some uh pretty like i wouldn't say complex but complex for a monkey in those close up shots they get them to do a lot in this movie they're very well trained very well trained yeah well this is i mean it, it has to be i'm trying to recall you know the extent of how much monkey time is in uh monkey outbreak. time yeah but i mean like mm. i mean not this is much. like not that much not that much no this had a lot more mm-hmm. A lot more monkey time. And a lot more like close a up. second lead in yeah. this movie. Right. Yeah. 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 A lot more close up yeah. monkey time where that thing's actually doing stuff. Yeah. That's like a challenge. I mean, like to, to take on that kind of directorial mm-hmm. project. Mm-hmm. I mean, you right. know, this isn't something that you're just doing like, I'm going to knock this out and be done with it. This is like you're all in, right? right. You're going to yeah. be dealing with a monkey mm-hmm. runner as your second, the star of the second lead in the movie. That's like a pretty big commitment. You can't yeah. control those things. They're, cra- they're wild animals. I thought it was like a nice little extra fuck you from Ella to put the bird in her slipper because she could have just left it in the bottom of the cage right. and it just like looked like it's it naturally a bird slipper died. Too, right? But she's like, no, you're going to step on your goddamn bird when I put it in your shoe. <laughs> you're going to think you killed it. It's yeah. <laughs> wonderful. Mm. Showing deliberate thought. Monkey's already, you know, premeditating. Mm-hmm. Yeah. To mur- Will it step up to murder? <laughs> murder most foul? What? Murder monkey. <laughs> We already had the murder most foul. <laughs> Boom! <laughs> you got there before I could get there. <laughs> Just like uh, I was thinking it. <laughs> uh, bravo. bravo. Bam. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, the nurse is replaced by 
the mother. So Alan's mother, at the beginning we meet her because she is the one who apparently has paid for his rehabilitation right. uh, equipment because they have to re-outfit his home. He has to adjust to this new life. She hires the nurse and whatnot. Yeah. And you get the you get the feeling she's a tad overbearing. A little bit. A bit. She's, just, she's worried about her son, and, but then it becomes a little too much. When they're just sitting there watching the home movies and she's narrating them, ugh. Yeah, Ugh. which is rough because like the guy's just been crippled. Right. Uh, remember when you were folk? running through a sprinkler when you were a kid? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Remember when you Thanks, had Mom. legs? Oh, yeah. you were so cute when you could move. Remember yeah. when you were worth something to me? Oh. <laughs> well, I, mean, but I don't know. I never got that she didn't. You know, like later on, she's like, "I gave up my entire life to come here and live with you." And I'm like, "Well, she did." You know, I mean, she did. But he comes right back at her. It's like, "No, who asked you to, Mom? Mm-hmm. I mean, come on." Yeah, but what? He is an selfless? adult. Yeah, but the, uh, right, he, he but you can't. Does. But she, but at that point, she's <laughs> blaming him, and then it, that all bets are off at that point. It's no longer selfless well, because and, he's being a dick at that. Well, point. He he's rightfully so. <laughs> yeah. I am pro Alan for yeah, this movie. We, we should say a lot of the part. The reason why he's a dick is he did try to kill himself with a dry cleaning bag he, early on in this movie. <laughs> yes, he did. So like, he's definitely having depression and expected yeah. things yes. after you have a huge tragedy in your That's life. That's very true. Oh, because his wife, uh, his wife, girlfriend, girlfriend. girlfriend. his girlfriend oh, yeah. leaves him and starts screwing over the, uh, screwing the tooch. The tooch. <laughs> the tooch. <laughs> screwing the tooch. To which John Panko says, <laughs> she's tooch. gonna leave you, then j- the fuck her. And this, Alan's like, I can't. <laughs> it's very dramatic. Yeah. yeah. But it's this, this is happening like while he's in the hospital. Yeah. 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 She even said, like, I know I should have come to visit you more. Yeah. That was like I was first line in the screw your doctor. Mm-hmm. Okay, thanks. Yeah. She started off coming to visit him and then the, I guess yeah, she, yeah, was she like, just came to see the doctor. Oh, the doctor's here. Yeah. yeah. Hello. How is my boyfriend doing? Mm-hmm. That's how it went. Great yeah. No, yeah. 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 Sorry for that. <laughs> yep. Well, that, of course, is going to put them on the hit list once of course. Uh, Alan finds out that, you know, this illicit affair is going on. Naturally. Yeah. Well, but first, wait. No, they do come next after the bird. Yep. Yeah, right. uh, the first Alan people. They're the next one. attention to them. I think, yeah, because he finds out that they're... Jeffrey finds out. Yeah. Right. Sees yeah, because remember, he, we get that great "you're a clinical cunt" line from yeah. him when mm. he sees them together. That at the was a great hospital. line. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, unexpected. <laughs> I was like, "Whoa, all right, bravo!" Dude. Yeah, for a movie that later on uses your slime as an insult, it's really <laughs> they hit both ends of the profanity spectrum there. Yeah. Like, mm. yeah, they really did the PG TV insult, and then the hardest you can go. <laughs> that was uh, that might be my favorite movie part of the movie. Just like Here's the you're slime. slime. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like you're laying that monkey low yeah. at this point. Just yeah. like, Ugh, you mean nothing to me. <laughs> well, she did just pee on him. Yeah, she did. Like that was the climax <laughs> of the relationship. You can almost hear the music going up, 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 and then it's just like <gasps> it just cuts and you hear his <sighs> dribble. <laughs> Slide. I can't even look at you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's wonderful. <laughs> yeah. There is an awful lot of... Well, we'll have to get to that. Okay, oh, so yes. wait, wait. Andy. Back to characters. The mother. Sorry. Right? Yeah. Right, yes, the, the mother. The mother and the um, the nurse. Nurse, yes. Because basically the mother, once she actually arrives in the house, like she almost immediately becomes like this overbearing harpy. Like what the hell happened? Yeah. At the beginning, I guess I wasn't expecting that... The woman, even though she was maybe, you know, a, a tad too concerned about her son's mm-hmm. well-being, would become this kind of like, you know, Alan, I just don't like you doing this, and you shouldn't be doing this, and blah, 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 blah. I'm like, Jesus Christ, you know, yeah. like she just became the nurse. Yep. Yeah. Well, she gets real possessive about the monkey trainer, Melanie, too. She does. She gets real like he'll do anything she asks, and mm-hmm. I, th- I once again cutting room four. I'm sure it's more gradual if you have all the footage in there of Maybe. her like descent into possessiveness. Yeah, but the, yeah. I mean Melanie just she doesn't give a fuck. Who's Melanie? Melanie's the monkey trainer with the barn. The hot blonde the monkey trainer. Barn of that's monkeys. What you have is she hot? Eighties hot, bar- well, uh, well, hot. Maybe she's eighties yeah, hot. Definitely. Yeah. I don't know. Okay. She had a nothing kind of a, particularly yeah. wrong with her. I don't think. Yeah. I mean, how good looking uh, are monkey trainers typically? Yeah, you know, yeah, on the spectrum you know, in of movies that, yeah. or in life, both. Either she's or. She's not like, like model hot, but no. You know. Okay, right. so anyway, <laughs> no, they don't have to be model hot. <laughs> okay, I'm just, just to okay. be. Uh, damn, Holly. <laughs> <laughs> All I asked was, is she hot? Sorry. Well, he thinks she's hot. 
Big. That's all that does, matters. Yeah. I don't know if he does. He, she's just. He doesn't have many who, options. Yeah, and she wants to take <laughs> it through fly fishing, <laughs> which is what you do. You, which has, he probably thought was a euphemism, and then he was like, "Fuck, we're like, actually going to fly fishing." Like, at fishing. least you caught one, or at least you hooked one. <laughs> kept talking about poles, and yeah. I got excited. Yeah. And she, we're fishing. Yeah. So there is a, even though you know one door closes, another one opens. Even though uh, Janine Turner. From Northern and he can't get through either. Is, of them. is screwing the tooch. There's pos- yeah. the possibility of the the blossoming tooch. romance with Melanie, the monkey trainer. Yeah, who, who literally has a barn full of monkeys full of that monkeys. she trains, and a field full of horses that the monkeys train. <laughs> I, think she, I think she trains the horses too. <laughs> like, I don't, there's, that, said, there's that. There's that. But she says she has no time. How does she train the horses? She has no time. And it looks like it's just her. Like, we haven't seen yeah. anybody else there. Who's tending the farm, damn it. <laughs> yeah, she's away from the farm a lot. She's taking care too. of those horses. I don't think it's a farm. I mean, I she says a field There's of horses. A barn Maybe she just rents know. the barn. Somebody else's farm. Somebody else's horses. People pay to keep their horses there? Uh, She pays to have a monkey farm there. <laughs> I, I think we're getting far into this. I think we're getting way too far into this. <laughs> then we need to back out of this alley. Okay, and get back yeah, to the let's road. get out of this. All right, so, but this is, I guess, like one of those things where, like, a simpler screenplay, and not that I'm saying that, you know, this is a... Ne- overly that, complex. It, yeah. yeah, it's overly complex where you would just have the Melanie character and either the nurse or the mother character, not both, and not both mm-hmm. Melanie and uh, the mad scientist character. Because Pankow also has, or Jeffrey, has his, you know, he's got a subplot, too, where yeah. you know, he's yes. trying to come up with his research, and Stephen Root Stephen is Roots? his boss, Just... and his boss is trying to steal his research, because that's what guys do to mad scientists. There's always the one who's trying always. to steal your research mm-hmm. and claim it as their own, and that never pays off. Nope. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> Nothing happens to Stephen Root. No. God damn it. Right. Cutting room floor. It's all there. It yes, there's like, a Steven yeah. Root now that death scene about. somewhere. God damn it. Right? I feel like the reason that they had the, the nurse and the mothers, there had to be some sort of element of the mother realizing that he didn't need her. That's what that's what projected her to become so overbearing. Because at first she's like, oh, this is my boy. I have to take care of him. And then she realizes that she's taking care of him, not that he needs her to take care of him. And that's where the element comes in, like, oh, the nurse is gone. I'm going to take care of my baby. That's where the element comes that she's doing it for her, not for him. Because she has to feel like he needs her. Mm-hmm. So that's why there had to be a nurse, then the mother. But does she have the this, this scene where, like, the nurse, it seems to me, like, after a while, seems to realize that she's unnecessary once Ella comes into the picture. The nurse realizes And the nurse it, yeah. is like, okay, I'm just going to sit around reading my book. I'm going to do this. And, like, you got that monkey to do it. And, like, then she gets, you know, uh, she develops an antagonistic relationship with the monkey. But the mother, it didn't seem, really had an antagonistic relationship with Ella. It was just she was aware that Ella was around. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that maybe, I don't even know, if, uh, until he starts saying, like, you know, I can. Yeah. She's making me angry. You know, I'm, I'm getting angry at you because she's nearby. And the mother's like, are you crazy? Like, are you seriously yeah. off your rocker because of your attachment to this beast? Again, I think that comes back to the fact that he does point out at one t- at one time that she she's doing these things for herself and not for him. So I don't think she realizes what's going on in her surroundings. She's just focused on what's making her feel like she's making a difference. Mm. That's why she's not realizing it. Right. Well, yeah. she's not she's not being selfless. She's being self focused. Really. Which would, I guess, go to her character. So it yeah. checks out. Hmm. Hmm. There were far too many sponge bath scenes. Oh, movie. my God. <laughs> Seeing him just hang in so that belt that, while oh she answered God. the phone. That, so that shot seemed weird to me. It's just like you could have you stayed on a little side shot of him going like, yeah. oh, tell her to call me. Tell her to send someone help. And But it's that wide Straight shot of him on. just hanging there. And it yeah. hangs on it for what it feels like so long. Don't get me wrong. I realize that there are real life situations where people do have to take care of their family members in these scenarios. Yes. I get that. But what we're saying is the shot was unnecessary. Probably. <laughs> Saying it's gratuitous. Yeah, it was. I mean, it gave, like, I'm sitting there going like, oh, that's uncomfortable. Well, that's uncomfortable. (laughs) Yeah. That's awkward. Yeah. This is uncomfortable. But it also, like, you know, it's, I think it's trying to, you know, I mean, in addition to the the sponge baths scenes, 
there's also other scenes throughout the movie that are trying to drive home just how awkward and uncomfortable it is to be, you know, suddenly mm-hmm. in this situation, which I was yeah. like, this is actually, okay, so Romero's going out of his way to try and get you in the headspace of this character right. yes. with a little bit of, I thought, tact. In and, your face. You know, <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> and then we get to the world's first sensitive uh, quadriplegic sex scene. Yep. Well, the first, when was the water dance with Eric Stoltz and Helen Hunt? Oh. Mm-hmm. Was he a quadriplegic? Paraplegic. Parapl- no, I don't, I don't, I don't remember. remember. <clears throat> I know this is one of, one of the only on film. So there's I, there are maybe other ones, but this is like one of the most prominent quadriplegic sex scenes ever. I wasn't sure it was going to happen, and then it did. I, I wasn't yeah. either. I'm just yeah. like, I wonder if they're gonna, they're doing it. They're doing it. <laughs> they're doing it. <laughs> did you like how she used like the equipment that you he know, used? Oh, yeah. that? Yeah. Yeah. Bravo. <laughs> no, use that, what you was, gotta that use. was actually really genius. Yeah. yeah. It's just yeah. like, hey, whatever helps you. Yeah. Or it gets you leverage. I, I was, I honestly was thinking of the, about the semantics and like, how is this yeah. going to work? And I'm like, that's how it's going to work. Mm-hmm. Brava. From, yeah. a, from a business <laughs> perspective, probably not a great idea for her to continue to do that with her clients in, in the space where she trains monkeys. Here, oh, come back to my bed though. so you can meet the monkeys. That yeah. we know. <laughs> <laughs> meet the monkeys. That was, she even said that was like the setup in her barn where she had to like train them how to like do stuff in right, like yeah. a house. So yeah. it's it's like, like, it's like it wasn't fake, like in her apartment. It was like right. a fake room. Right. The fake yeah. hospital room yeah. and everything. Which I mean, which led to the, uh, <laughs> which oh led to the, 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 the <laughs> like I, I said during the movie, I've seen many things that kind of, uh, <laughs> that were the, uh, <laughs> the euphemism, the euphemism for, for the bliss of, uh, the bliss of, of, sex. of yes. Yeah. The I, like I said, moment. yes, yeah. I've seen, uh, I've seen flowers. I've seen fireworks. I have never seen monkeys going wild. <laughs> first it has to be the first and maybe only time. Ace on- Ventura. All the, all the animals <gasps> in the apartment go wild. Oh, yes. Yep, they you're right. From this this movie. is also going back to the central <laughs> theme correct. of the movie, right? About the uh, the conflict between the animals, the man, and the or the animal nature and and human nature, or whatever mm-hmm. the yeah mm-hmm. yeah who will rule? Yep, even in the moments of passion, passion, indeed. Uh, and it's like twelve monkeys in this scene that are like going crazy. It's, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's it's like it's a lot. It's not it's, just yeah, like it is one. a lot. It is a lot of monkeys in that scene, just freaking out. Freaking out, man. And the chirping. It's a magical, yeah. magical scene. You have to see it in order to believe it. Um, like one swinging around on like a little tire in his cage. <laughs> it's great. Yeah. They're well trained and cute monkeys. <laughs> they are. All right, so adorable. eventually this monkey does start killing people. Yes. The first victims are the Tooch. And Northern, and Northern exposure. Expo- exposure. Yeah. In the throes of passion themselves in, in a, a cabin, cabin in yeah. the woods, because that's how you do it. Sure. <clears throat> Where the monkey can find them and light their bed on fire. Apparently. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They, I mean, not even in like, not even in a way where it shows, they're just like, we don't have the money to burn anything down. Mm-hmm. So we are just going to show flame. And a phone call. That's, I mean, that's all you need. Like, but that gets the point across, I guess, because they just yeah. show f- growing flame on a black screen, and then you get a phone call saying, what? Both of them? Yeah. <laughs> no! How will I tell Alan? Alan, they're dead. Do you need anything more than I, You don't need anything more, more than that. Yeah. Like, it gets it. Like, I mean, you know, I, you don't need to dedicate any more time than that to those characters. Yeah. You I did, the like, point. the shot of, like, Ella, like, striking the match in the dark, and then you see, like, light your face a little bit, and then the whole place goes up. Yeah. It was a great suspense moment. Oh, my God. Yeah. It's visual storytelling, right? You can yeah. tell stuff in yeah. symbols. You don't need I mean, it really is. Do we even mention, like, the opening credits? I think they deserve a mention oh, at this God. point. Or the opening title sequence. The pan in on the monkey face? Right, just yeah. Yeah. red monkey face, a little bit of the title. Closer red monkey face, a little bit more of the title. Closer red monkey face. Danger red monkey face. Danger, Danger red monkey face. <laughs> yeah. It was Full genius. title. That was genius. Well, the second victim, third, third victim, third. We're not counting the parakeet. We're going to count the parakeet. Is uh, the mother character, of course. The mother, yeah. of course. The idea, I think, as we've established, I think that uh, I think so. Ella can feel when uh, Alan is upset and wants to kill someone. It is basically because, you know, she's helping him. Like, he wants to answer a question in class. She'll put her hand up. He wants to kill someone. <laughs> Right? She carries it through. But she's so. actually invoking that rage in him. Yeah. So she's first creating the rage she's and then acting it. on it. Yeah. Right. I think yeah. he's got yeah. it. She's amplifying yeah. it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. 
which is the odd part of the movie where it seems like yeah. you only need half of that equation to still have a movie you can yeah. follow. Yeah, yeah. But basically, as soon as she senses he's mad at someone, she goes and kills that person he's mad at. Yeah, it's right. basically what happens throughout the movie. So. And old mom has to take a bath with a plugged in hair dryer nearby. So it goes. I love that the monkey comes up with different ways to kill people. Right? It's never the same thing. Very creative. Yep. It's and it's monkey. always, and most of them are things that can be covered up or explained. Yeah. It's a smart monkey. Mm-hmm. Yeah, hair dryer just fell on the tub. Mm-hmm. All those brain shavings. Yeah. <laughs> the brain <laughs> shavings. <laughs> brain shavings in the ass. Yeah. yeah. And then the uh, pain cow eventually, Jeffrey, gets, uh, you know, like. After a. Extended period a of monkey really searching. Really long monkey Just fight a long chase. fight, chase, <laughs> search, everywhere, oh, yeah, yeah, up and yeah, down. Yeah. 20 minutes, just this all is over the stuff, place. So right? long. I mean, I liked it. Yeah, mm-hmm. you're just saying it went on too long. I could have, it felt like we repeated certain parts. Like, I wasn't bored, but it was a bit long. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah I, that, I mean, we yeah. could say that. I'm like, I wasn't bored, but they're like, I think you could have, like, there was a. Uh, a section of a chase and a confrontation, and then they went on from there, and then they kind of did it again. There's a section, there's yeah. a little bit of a chase, and another confrontation, and they go back on from there. Like, they could have probably done one and then ended how they ended it, instead of doing it a couple times in just well, different exactly. areas of the house. But it was kind of, it's that but, kind of, like, Hitchcockian suspense yes. thing. Which, yeah. Yes. Again, again, I'm not sure if Romero's done a lot of that, like, to this extent. I mean, this is... You know, more elaborate in those yeah. kind of ways where, like, you know, he has to, the phone's ringing, he's got to get to the phone. It's that rear window kind yeah. of thing where you've got the guy who can't move around mm-hmm. very yes. well on his own <clears throat> trying to get the phone off the hook. And then he does get it, you know, to answer it for, you know, to get help. I think it's stuck in the back of his wheelchair. Then yes. Well, let's 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 put a pin in the uh, the activities of Alan throughout this whole process yeah. and just describe that in full. Well, oh, I think when we get to it. Because that is something that needs to be spotlighted all on its own. Just the, uh, the, 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 the it's the slowest moving wheelchair in the world, first of it all. Really yeah, is. I was going to say, you calling it a chase is super generous to, <laughs> like, like it's it's trying to be an action sequence, it's, but it's right. all in, like, one floor of a house. It's just this side of parody. It's almost yeah. uh, what David Cross in Scary Movie 2. Like, it's yeah, just it's, this. It's right on the other side do, of that. Though, it's a guy, it's a, it's a kid. He's being chased by, he's being terrorized by a monkey. He is. He like, would definitely have a faster wheelchair than that. Great, like but IRL. Like, it's yeah. the 80s. I feel like it would. And the, but the way he uses it is pretty great. Like he's got to go get the phone. And I mean, and I'm I give them all the credit because they're doing it in the only way they can do with a guy in this situation. Like they're not going out of bounds. In that I just area. I just feel like. It, he can it, only use his head. But yeah, it made it yeah. Too, and they're doing it, it right that way. But it made right, it I'm too saying comedic. Physically, his head, not like his mind. It made yeah. it too it comedic. Said. Like <clears throat> the combination, not purposely, but the yes. combination yeah. of the slow moving wheelchair <laughs> showing him actually going the distance that he could go, and right. then the phone hooks. That made it hilarious. And trying like, and wake up, be hilarious. wake up, Melanie. Oh my god, just wake up! <laughs> he, that goes on, on for so long, <laughs> so long. Just running into people. Wake up, please. <laughs> Oh, it's great! It's yeah. great again. Not but you're meant to be comedic. More as a it was. Well, I mean, I know that you guys we were laughing when <laughs> we were watching. It, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, so it was playing that way. Not like uh, it was not meant so to it was be not that a way. Suspenseful film, or the, this moment. And the, I mean, it still is. But I mean, you can't help but look at it now and just. I mean, I can't without finding that a little funny. Just yeah. like it's the, the relief of uh, maybe. Yeah, I mean, it's the emergence of the situation combined with the fact that he can only go so fast. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like yeah. he yeah. is stuck in the situation he's in, and usually in this situation, if somebody's being stalked by anything, there's a, you know there's a little more urgency to it, and he can only be so urgent in the condition. He did a lot in. of, and it's a little funny. He did a lot of neck acting in this movie. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 Lots of neck do, I, yeah. Yeah. I wonder if he had I wonder if he had a personal masseuse during yeah. this. Oh, like to keep him yeah. that's a lot of tension. Yeah. He had to have had some sort of massage therapist it with him the, the whole monkey. time. The monkey just have a <laughs> that's the monkey. <laughs> <laughs> one of the trained monkeys yeah. just oh, comes yeah. up there and gives him a little neck. Yeah, there were so many monkeys. Yeah. One of them had Does no the massage. Monkey have a masseuse? Probably. Probably. I would hope so. I would. I mean, I would hope so as well. <laughs> Maybe they just had like a little monkey train. A tiny, yeah. a smaller monkey for the monkey? <laughs> oh my God. <gasps> that would be great. Yes. Because there's a monkey like, assistant. <laughs> yeah. A baboon or something, right? No, no, some other, another type of monkey. No, no yeah. A, yeah, a tinier monkey. monkey. Like one of the, the little uh, spider monkeys. Just I, th- <laughs> I think the part for me with the most suspense was when 
uh, Ella's in the closet, and John Pankow like is going in there with like the poison, oh, the, you know, syringe. The yeah. yeah, yeah, and like he knows she's in there, and like we as the audience think she's in there, but we don't know for sure. Right, and it's like it was like words. a reverse Michael Myers because she's in there and he's going in there, and then she comes out with a hanger at him. And, oh yeah, oh my, I love the the hanger work that she does with that. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's great. so great. Like, yeah. It's so great. <laughs> Because he's he like a little hockey puck. And she hockey yeah. pucks. Yeah. 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 And then Brilliant. she takes it and squirrels it away in her cage to like to save for later. Yeah. 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 You love it. It's a smart little monkey. Yeah. Smart, smart monkey. monkey. I love that yeah. she has the wherewithal and the energy to stab through a sports coat and what have you into Jeffrey mm -hmm. in order to poison him. Yet she just jabs at Melanie's face yeah. for like five minutes trying to figure out how do I do how do I do this? Well, I think it was more like she was fucking with Alan. Like, I, mean, I think so or, too. Or, That's or, probably. or she is the way that he is feeling her emotions, she is feeling his emotions, and so she's conflicted about sticking. Mm. Probably because oh. he is starting to kind of work that. Yeah. Like he's he's trying to get her to like, hey, no, don't do that. Let's do music. Come here, baby. Come, come here. here. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, Sensual oh, whispers no. to the monkey were so upsetting. Just come on, baby. Just, you can so, do it. Come on. Just put some little music. Sean, please stop. Just, just and he's so down. sweaty just, while he's doing this, too. He is yeah. a little, he's glistening. He's yeah. a little spotty with sweat. Yeah. And his master plan to bite the monkey to death. Oh, my God. Which, again, that neck acting. It's the only thing neck you can acting. do. Yeah. And for five minutes. Uh, uh, he bites it uh, and shakes it back and forth like a dog with, like, a toy. I know. What else can you do? Like, but, I mean, that's, again, that, you know, yeah. the animal uh, yeah. 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 animal nature with thing. Monkey it's like, how do you do it? Yeah. Bites it is. into the monkey and <laughs> rah, 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 tears it apart. Rips and yeah. shreds. Yeah. Which is fantastic and brutal. It's I, was great. Like, yeah. I was surprised. Yeah. I was too. The, the jump scares work on you. They did. They yeah, got me a couple, a couple times. Yeah, that monkey the closet yeah. got me. Even though I was like, "It's gonna happen. Don't jump." And still fucking did. There was yeah, yeah right. And there was <laughs> one after that that just scared. It scared the shit out of me. I was just was not expecting it. I think it was when Melanie was there, and I think she gets jumped on. Oh happen? yeah, yeah all of a sudden, she comes out, out of nowhere. Yeah, yeah just yeah. Psh, yeah. that scared me. That yeah. one got yeah. me. Bravo. Yeah. yeah, so there's a lot of, It's not the cat jumping into the frame. No, monkey, but that's but what I was. That's is a it. sentient monkey trying to kill you. Yes, yeah. but I was thinking of the cat when he was going for the closet. I'm like, some random cat that didn't exist for this entire movie yeah. is going to jump out of this closet. <laughs> that right was now. probably in the original cut. There was Maybe. Probably so where like did the cat come from? Well, that would have been great. The monkey, the the syringe as a weapon, I think, is also like a brilliant. The, it does because it, yes. you're already like needles, and like I can't imagine where that needle is going to go. And right. then the monkey's got it. We don't know where the monkey is. The monkey's right. running around with this fucking hypodermic. Thing. Right. Yeah. They know what they're doing yeah. when they want to yeah. add tension to it. Yeah. Is you got that, you know it's full of poison because it was obviously labeled poison when he picked it up. So, I mean, that's <laughs> automatic right. added tension to the movie with that happening, which is great. Adds another level to it. They knew what they were doing. Yeah. Yeah. So it all ends well. Ella is torn to pieces. Doesn't end well. Well, there's yeah. a, the, there's a, there's a I mean, jump Jeffrey scare, dies. I guess, before. Yeah. But Melanie the end, is half yeah, run over yeah. by a wheelchair at this point. She falls on the point. tape deck after he kills her. That was a little sad. Yeah. Like she hit the yeah. tape deck That's on her sad. way down. That was, that was her thing. That over. was their thing. Yeah. That was their... I was, sad. I was a little sad. Yeah. I'm not going to lie. It's a little, a little sad. sad. Yeah. It's a little sad that well, because like, it's not her fault. No. John, John Panko is the one at fault here. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah, but at least he Fucker. got... Science get, got their comeuppance. He yeah. did. You know, killed. And then... But it also turned out that the doctor, Tucci, wasn't doing his job and it... It turns out yeah. that Alan's problem... It's a whole little subplot here. ...was a completely... Yeah, it was like... Yeah. So he can actually yeah. be uh, repaired. If he can right. move, you know, show some kind of muscle, voluntary muscle movement, which he is able to do to save his life yeah. uh, from the monkey, and uh, they're able to reverse his uh, his condition, yeah. which has got... It was kind of like, is that a cop-out to give it a happy ending? It's like, oh, I know... There's a lot of people who have this, and you know you don't come back <laughs> from right. it. But in the movies, it's a happy ending. You got to have like a happy ending, right? Or things. he should have drove off, and like they get in the car and they're smiling, and then he smiles, and he's still got monkey, got teeth, monkey yeah. teeth, and they drive off. Yeah. Well, George Romero did not want the happy ending. That was Orion oh. making him put that in. Uh, sure, his ending. He 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 had a different ending entirely. Um, they didn't want that, so he wanted to compromise with them and just have the Ella popping out of his back. Like oh, in surgery, that was good. he wanted that to be the end, and oh. they said no. So oh. we got that was the, a good. We scene. got the "Let's go fishing" ending. Yeah. Yeah. Literally, "Let's go fishing" is like one of the last lines of this movie. 
Did that it was, feel yeah. disingenuous, yes. or were you okay Probably. with the, yeah. that ending? It would have been. I, I would have been I good like with it. the monkey jumping yeah. out. Yeah, that same here. Like a Carrie type fun. ending. I yeah. was hoping I that ending. there was the scene where he, uh, uh, after he wakes up from the monkey popping out of his back, which mm-hmm. I think is great. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's like, "Did it? Did it work?" Did I get my body back? I hope they were going to go full Twilight Zone and then come down and he's got a monkey body. <laughs> that was just a tiny monkey body. <laughs> that would have been great. That was five stars in my book if they went for the tiny monkey body on a hu- uh, with a human head. See, I was hoping like... There like oh, yeah. oh, oh. I was hoping they'd pan over and like there's no doctors in the room, but you see Ella just like outside the room staring in the window at him or something, <laughs> something like that. Something, yeah. Like, doesn't matter. She'll always be with you, you yeah. know. But no, I do I'm like surprised. the monkey popping out of the back. I was sur- I was surprised that like once Ella is dead, she is dead. Mm-hmm. dead. There's no fake out, you know. Mm-hmm. No, uh, she jumps back. There's up. no <laughs> higher supernatural element besides the psychic link. Right. <laughs> well, <laughs> higher yeah. supernatural yeah. element. Yes. My the ending I wanted was a little more deranged. Uh-oh, what'd you want, Holly? I wanted Melanie to be like, no, it didn't work, and then she leave with the doctor. <laughs> <laughs> After the guy's gone through all of this oh. shit, we have to give a happy ending, right? I guess. He's gotta, I guess. Not everyone gets it would have been funny ending. if she's like, it didn't. I'm sorry. Yeah. What if it just ended about with that when they were wheeling him out? I'm like, is this yeah. going to be like, are they going to go like down or like didn't work? And yeah, like, there yeah. was a moment where I was kind of yeah. like, I was with you know, because yeah. you're so conditioned to horror movies now. Like none of them have happy endings, really. I mean, like yeah. somebody gets away, but there's always some idea that the evil force is still somehow yeah. lurking around for the sequel, you know. But this was like, oh, OK, everything. Basically, where they they survived their yeah, ordeal, except, and so they get rewarded by mm. uh, having a long and happy life together. Except all the other people that he loves are dead. Yeah, oh, but they except for that, his mother is but dead. Jeffrey yeah. is dead. Mm. So they, they at least. But they've been walk. dating for like a day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, very true. I was hoping, but it was a good date. I mean, in yeah. you know, they had yeah, a good things time. Progressed quickly. <laughs> they did. He nuzzled her. And then did a that was uncomfortable. Yeah, I was like, "Is that what you're calling it?" <laughs> 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 yeah. A scissor nuzzle. All right. So uh, <laughs> notice how Colin moved on quickly yeah. from that comment. <laughs> like the scissor nuzzle. So uh, we're just no, uh, wrap it's a done wrap up. I was. Right? Ho- I was I'm ho- just. I'm going to leave. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> I was hoping the movie would end with like them wheeling him out. It didn't work. So she takes him back to his like sad house where all this shit went down. And he goes back upstairs and wheels himself back under the dry cleaning bag. And it's just like. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that would have been great. I oh, tried. Just, it's a stop, and yep. then just his head moving awkwardly <laughs> underneath it, yeah. and then cut to black. Yeah. Oh, that would have been great. <laughs> ah. Or, what is oh, I would go for the Mormon <laughs> ending. Yeah. I'm in for the Mormon yeah. ending. He's, when he's yelling out the number commands, he's like, number, he's like, 73, and it just drops from the ceiling. He's got like a ready laundry bag that just drops. Uh-huh. <laughs> oh, see, that would have been good. Yeah. That's the final solution. It yeah. really would have been. That was a creative way for him to like try and kill himself. Yeah. Like, Although, has he seen Black Christmas? Is was, that where he got well, that from? Right, yeah. But I was going to say, like, he does get under the bag, but isn't it open at the bottom? Yeah, it is. Like, is he just trying well, to breathe it in? it around his face, yeah. though. Yeah, yeah, but it doesn't seem like there's enough closure. <laughs> no, there definitely isn't. Yeah. Enough yeah. that you create a vacuum and... Okay. Well, anyway, so... <laughs> it's true. <laughs> All you have to do is suck enough to create a vacuum. Yeah. Quote Inside Colin Inside a... Uh, no, nope, that's where the quote bag. stops. Kyle's on a roll tonight. Yeah. 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 <laughs> All right, so that means it's time for the mailbag. Wait, are we done Do with we have, uh, Monkey Shine? I think so. Yeah, I think we need oh, yeah, to be. That's it. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> we need to cut it off. Okay, so we're going to uh, read from the mail. We're going to summon Igor. Igor, where are you, sir? Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. Igor, give us the bag. Jesus. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> okay. And thank I'm you, sorry. Igor. I'm sorry, Igor. I'm sorry. I apologize. Uh, so you're probably wondering where the hell we get this mail from. Well, I'll tell you. Where do we get it from, Colin? <clears throat> All you have to do is find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show or on Twitter at Sat Freak Show. Or you can email us Saturday Night Freak Show at yahoo.com. Or Instagram. Okay. Maybe for the future. Uh, we're not there yet. <laughs> one you day. Have one for yeah. Michaela to do. Um, <laughs> we'll, 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 no, we'll get on Vine or, yeah. Vine's dead. I know. Uh, that's, yeah. that's why. Uh, we'll bring so, it back. Yeah. 
And we would love to hear from you. Oh, yes, Join please. the Freak Show family. Let yeah, us let know, us know. Uh, anything that you have to say comment-wise about this episode or any previous episode that we've done. Yeah, let me know what I asked earlier and if I'm wrong or not. He doesn't I have no idea, what, no yeah. idea yeah. what I asked earlier. <laughs> All right, so Video Cop writes in and says, I always wanted to see this as a kid until I found out the monkey on the cover wasn't the killer. Ah. I was so let down. It's typical of a lot of these 80s horror films that look like the cover, or, yeah, look like the cover of Troll 2. That monster didn't exist. (laughs) What would it be? Just a a fucking symbol monkey smashing people? Is that... All right, Sean, here's an opportunity then. Has that movie been made? The symbol monkey smashing people? Killer symbol monkey movie. Is this an opportunity? I don't think so. I no. Just make it. Well, here you go. Here's your opening. It's <laughs> it's it's like a. This. Here we go. All right, we're you making know, it. Paranormal movies are huge right now. Sure. Some yeah. kid gets it at a garage sale. Weird shit starts happening once it's brought. This into is the like house. an Are You Afraid of the Dog yep. or Goosebumps yep. episode. Oh my god. But yes. but you know your mainstream horror fans in America would eat that shit up. I guess you yeah. Know? Possessed monkey. Yeah. Because it was owned by a Carney Barker or something who, like, sold a yeah. bunch of them. No. Some guy, like, is running away. He's a serial killer. And yep. something explodes. And he has falls into Oh, my God, Colin. Oh. All right. And there's a, great, there's a great opportunity for a cameo from someone of, like, of horror history to play that role there. I think uh, we do a cameo of uh, Jason Beige. <laughs> Beggy. At the beginning Beggy. of that movie. <laughs> I know, Beggy. At the beginning of that movie, just as a callback to <laughs> this. He's still working in he, what? He's Chicago PD. He's the cop. And he's also been in every cop show ever. I was looking at his IMDb list. I'm, and I'm not kidding. Every cop show that was ever created, he's been was in. Was he in Miami Vice? Yes. Jake and the Fat Man. <laughs> Which is a great title for a TV show. That is. Jake and the Fat Man. I remember Jake. Everything he's yeah. been in. Every cop show He was ever. not in Miami Vice. I probably was. Okay. Shut <laughs> up. Uh, so that brings us to our final thoughts. We're going to go around the table and give you our final reviews. Should you see this movie or not? Colin! What did you think of Monkey Shines? Um, Monkey Shines. I like this movie. Uh, right off the bat, thank yeah. You. I think uh, well because I was like, how else do I like lead into this? Like, here's my problem with Monkey Shines. No, the uh, I actually I liked it more than I had problems with it. You know, I mean the whole podcast. I'd be like, well, this was an issue, but like it's a very competently made movie. Romero has this kind of a he's a very old fashioned movie director. There's not like a lot of frills mm. to the his style, and I like the fact that like all of his movies. I assume because he's shooting like in his neighborhood or something. I don't know. <laughs> in friends' houses or yeah. however else he gets these. <clears throat> all the, mo- the houses in his films all kind of look the same. They're these big, you know, I don't know if they're Victorians. I mean, we always usually see the interiors of right. their sets or whatever. But, you know, this kind of uh, colonial style. Uh, Grand staircases, they, yeah. they, they little balconies, like wooden plaster. They look like yeah. turn of the century, like yeah. early nineteen yeah. hundreds. Yeah, but in all yeah. of them, I think, like you know, I mean, I remember mm-hmm. those houses in Creepshow and To Evil Eyes. You know, I mean, it just that seems to be the uh, what he has access to or something. Mm-hmm. But it, or he looks for those later on. Yeah. He may be it looking for those be a on purpose. Preference. Just yeah. to be like, this is what I like, and it, it evokes something that you know I like to. And it also like makes it do. maybe distinctly Pittsburghian. I don't know. Maybe. Um, but, I mean, you know, saying that his style is kind of no frills, he points the camera at his subject and then, uh, you know, records it and then cuts it together. I mean, just it's a very, um, you know, I said no frills. No I need frills. another. Where's my thesaurus? It's, uh, you know, <laughs> just cut and dry, <laughs> like mean pota- like, meat, meat and potatoes, meat and potatoes. There you go. yeoman like, <laughs> just there a it meat is. And potatoes filmmaker. There you go. Um, I, you know, I would criticize his writing, I think, because he does this with like all, you know, just like the authoritarian characters stand out to me because they don't talk like real people. They are the villain, underscored, capitalized. This person is the villain of the movie, mm-hmm. you know? Um, I think he, not that he does a whole lot better with his uh, heroic characters or his protagonists, but like the villains generally always in Romero movies stand out with sore thumbs of like, Jesus Christ, you know, I don't think that was enough to make this not worth seeing, you know, Um, I would still recommend it because I think what he's trying to do 
as far as creating a suspense thriller, you know, it's not really a horror movie so much yeah. as it is a suspense thriller, which is, a, I think, a change of pace for him probably, you know, at the time, um, is effective. I mean, he does, you know, through editing and the little, you know, uh, visual effect or makeup effects or whatever they're doing, puppet effects monkey and the monkey, monkey hands, hand. monkey yeah. stick hands. <laughs> it's a very effective at convincing you that this monkey is really up to no good. And, you know, uh, is a, uh, you know, you're concerned about some of the characters toward, you know, like there was a scene where the monkey, and I'm sure it was fake monkey hands or whatever, <laughs> but the monkey had a syringe. Right? Yeah. And the thing about syringes. And Melanie's laying unconscious on the Some floor. Some of that was real monkey. <laughs> and the real monkey's up there with a needle, like, trying to poke her around the area of the face. Yeah. <laughs> and it's yeah. like, hey, gee, woo, gee, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like, oh. Would you, why are you trusting the monkey with the needle? Yeah. Yeah. So some of that's, you know, kind of cringeworthy and... and uh, and effective. I mean, I guess that's the thing. It was effective. The jump scares. Um, you know, I don't usually jump at movie. I jumped at this movie. Of all <laughs> right. movies, it got me like four times or something. <laughs> and I was like, uh, my guard must be down because it's a monkey. Something. Movie. I was almost embarrassed <laughs> that it got me because it happened. Yeah, I was like exactly. almost looking around, like and they didn't, didn't no see me jump, that, right? did they? Right? Yeah. 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 I was like, I jumped. No, everybody else jumped, right? Yeah. If I had a bucket of popcorn, it probably <laughs> would have gone. Uh, into the air, but uh, yeah, so I mean, based on those things, I think it's maybe a little over long, but uh, you know, I think you should check out Monkey Shines. I think it's a it's a good night at the movies. There it yeah. is. Um, uh, I mean, I think like we've said, it's it's an effective movie. It does feel like we mentioned earlier. Uh, it's uh, more Hitchcockian than horror. Um, there's some a few good effects in this movie, but it's not over for Tom Savini. Um, doing effects and credited as effects on this movie, it's not uh, something I expected from Tom Savini. Mm-hmm. I mean, and it's possible that things like that got cut out or on the cutting floor and that there's a bunch of stuff that we're missing from this movie. But uh, the movie as it is, like we said, it's a, it feels like they could have tightened up a few portions of it, but it is effective. It is suspenseful. Um, uh, like we said, he does... Um, he, like Colin said, he does just uh, meat and potatoes. He does point his camera at the at the uh, actors, but I think they all were very, uh, like we said, very effective. Um, and again, yeah, made us jump. Uh, I recommend it. I had a good time with this movie. I mean, you got his monkeys. How can you not have a good time with monkeys? You can have a bad time with monkeys, but I had a good time. <laughs> I had a good time with the monkeys in this movie. It starts out adorable, and then it just gets terrifying. And uh, yeah, I enjoyed it. It was good. I've been wanting this. You know, I've been wanting to see this movie for a long time. I'm glad I finally got to see it. I yeah. recommend it. I was gonna say they have. They yeah. came up with the saying of it's more fun than a barrel of monkeys. Oh, for some reason. so there, you <laughs> there go. it is. Yeah, I'm loving this monkey trend we got going on. <laughs> God. Do we need this to keep it going fun. though, or have I we think, maxed out? I think we've monkeys? hit. Yeah. This is it. I think we got we got <laughs> peak. We hit Unless peak. King yeah. Kong or something. Yeah, it was diminishing. <laughs> Yo, yeah, we'll there you go. We're right. bigger monkeys. Amy thinks you're ugly. Is right, that what yeah. she says with the power are glove? Right. Watching mm. you. <laughs> Tim, Tim, Tim Curry. Yeah. But I think we've hit pink monkey. Any peak monkey. Everything after this is diminishing returns. Yeah, I think this is a good monkey run. It's good. This is, it was robot monkeys. Killer dogs. Okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> maybe we'll pursue other animal movies. Who knows? Uh, we'll maybe. see. Uh, yeah, this movie was a lot of fun. I I would have liked to have seen what George Romero could fill in with the plot holes. I would have liked to see what storyline he would have woven together because I think it would have been a bit different than what we got. Um, but otherwise, I thought it was a lot of fun. Um, neck acting, man. Ooh. Neck acting. Bravo. I mean, come on. <laughs> Monkeys neck acting. It was just a good time. There, I mean, I think we all summed it up. This was this was just a fun movie. I definitely recommend it. I give it I don't, like four backpacks of bricks out of five. <laughs> there you go. Like Kayla. everybody's stealing my rating system, <laughs> which I stole from some other <laughs> Right. So I first saw this movie like two years ago. And I kind of became obsessed with it because I'd never heard of it before. And most people I come into contact oh, with really? have never heard of it either. Really? And I was like, it's George Romero. And like, there's not very many monkey murder movies. Right? So like, you're going to hit like, <laughs> not enough. It's a if, small yeah, genre. Just, exactly. Yeah. Um, and, you know, this, I, we talked about it a little bit last week off mic, but George Romero has come out at, much later and said when he was making this movie, he was drinking one bottle of vodka a day, like a water bottle carrier on set, just chugging it to himself. So the, 
I guess this is his like maximum overdrive. Bravo! You know, it's, it's, you know, you know. See our maximum. If he's saying it's one podcast. bottle, it's probably more than probably, that. Probably, yeah, know? right. Because they're you know? like, what do they remember? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's definitely so, more. Um, but I think that you know, Jason Bakey like kind of looks like a young Michael C. Hall, which is a little weird, <sighs> but not nearly bit. as good as Michael C. Hall. And uh, <sighs> the fake beard is. Oh you know, God! You man, can see the, the glue. Fake beard is, it's not yeah. good. Yeah. But all in all, it's a really fun movie. It is a little long. And it's weird because, like Colin was saying, it doesn't full on fall into a horror movie. I think it's this weird Venn diagram of like a lifetime movie and like a, <laughs> like a thriller movie. Because the first like 40 minutes is like a straight up lifetime movie. Right. Like this guy's, you know, quadriplegic and his life sucks and he wants to kill himself. And his girlfriend's like, fucking the tooch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds so dirty when you say it that way. I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, this movie's great. Definitely go watch it. It is a little long, but it, it it's worth it. It's like worth the it. payoff yeah, it's worth is it. worth totally it. Worth it. Um, just a fun fact: this movie, the budget for this movie was seven and a half million dollars in eighties dollars. Two so. million went to the monkey. Yeah, I guarantee it. <laughs> um, Whoa, but it only made five million at box oh, office, so damn. it was a failure Man. financially. But uh, and know. so ended the genre of monkey movies. Yeah. until. Yeah. Outbreak? Apes movies. I actually know. do I believe no this yeah. opened opened a week or two within when Die Hard opened, so that oh, didn't help. Uh, nope. um, no, it didn't help. They put this out as a summer blockbuster, believe it or not. It should have been a January dump it movie, but mm. it was a summer right. summer blockbuster wow. in quotes. So. I barely remember it coming around. Mm-hmm. I mean, it seems like I was aware of it more on video. Than, yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, shit. There was another movie like two years before this called Link with Elizabeth Shue. <laughs> And Terrence Stamp, he's the mad scientist. He's got this ape in a cage, and she, it develops, I think, uh, an affection for Elizabeth Shue and starts killing people. I mean, don't we all mm, develop yeah. affection for Elizabeth Shue at some point? Yeah. 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 No, it's great. Yeah. Definitely Killer check it out. Movie. Yeah. Uh, your monkey shines. Yeah. Not, not Link. Monkey shines. Yeah. Not Link. Yeah. Check it out. Monkey shines. There you go. Good. There it is. Yeah. All right. So next week, we're going to be watching... Oh shit! It's Colin. Mine. Okay. Uh, what are we watching uh, next week? On the spot. Oh. On the spot. Oh, I'm gonna do this to you. I think. Oh no. Oh no. Yeah. Oh, no. Jared, Jared, oh no. Jared, yeah. Jaredson. Oh god. Jaredson. Jaredson. Because Denny Villeneuve oh, announced yeah. that he was gonna make a <laughs> oh, remake of no. this and was wanted to do it since his childhood, probably when he saw David Lynch's Dune. Oh, there it is. We're gonna watch David Lynch's David Dune. Lynch's Dune. <laughs> yeah. I have not seen this. So, oh, what? You're uh, I, no, I have not. Oh, I have not. I have so many years I've been hearing about Dune. It I've is never seen crazy. It. In we'll a good or a bad way, we'll find out we'll next see. week. Stay when... tuned, because Colin has been threatening this movie on us for a long time. Yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> next week on the Saturday Night Freak Show, Fiends, and until then, the basement is going dark.